Hi, welcome back for part two of my demo of Nick Software's new Color Effects 4. Again, remember this is unreleased uh, code, so um, there may be some changes. It's pretty stable right now, but there's always a chance something can change from what you see. So I'm going to come down here to Nick Software. Instead of choosing my old standby 3, I'm going to go to the new 4, and we're going to play around with this image. So I have some recipes. Um, and then I have my filters list. Let's start with some uh, filters. And this is a landscape, so um, let's take a look at some things that we can use. Um, we can come in, we can try Pro Contrast, and this is the thing. You can click and try and experiment with whatever you want. Um, there's no rule that says you have to use one versus another. Um, and uh, that's the fun thing of playing around, Detail Extractor. And then if you want to come up here and see what did that do, you know, what's the difference between before and after. It's like you notice how it brought a lot more detail uh, into the mountain and the city. It also changed the color a little bit. Um, you notice that there's a 6% um, saturation. It's like, hmm, maybe I don't want that. I want to boost it up a lot. And I really like what it does to the colors there. Um, that one's a little bit slow to respond, so let's see, what if we brought it down to zero? What would, would happen? Okay, um, the effect radius, you can say fine, but large, and normal. And notice it's all real-time previews as you have around things. I'm thinking, eh, maybe I don't like that one, so I'm going to just leave it alone. Polarization is one I like to use a lot, so I'm actually going to go ahead and start with that. And you can rotate your polarizer and change the strength and everything, but I'm looking at it right now and thinking, no, it's not too bad. It's 105. Um, let's see what happens when we rotate this guy around. Not seeing a huge effect on it today. Usually you see kind of a bigger, let's actually bring, bring this up to make it easier to see. Okay. Watch what happens. Okay, so um, you can experiment with the different uh, rotation angles and strength. Um, but usually this is one that um, most of the time I'm happy with the default for a standard scenario like this. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on Add Filter. I'm going to add something else after this. Um, now, there's lots of filters we can do. We're just going to play around and look. Like there's Skylight, which kind of adds a nice um, yellow effect. Um, or Sunlight, excuse me. There's Skylight, um, which kind of adds a little more um, yellow to the um, sunset that's happening here. You can see the before and after. And so I really like that, but maybe I don't want it on my sky. So I come in here, I can do a negative control point, and I can remove that from my sky. I can create a bunch of these control points, or I can bring some of the opacity back if I want some. Um, I can say, you know, let's make sure that I'm still getting it on here, on this uh, Mount Rainier. And I can say, you know, I want my space needle to be white. I don't want it to be yellow. So I can click on that and come in here and remove the effects in there. So there's different kinds of things I can do. Um, and let's go in here and say Add Filter. And let's do Tonal Contrast. That's a really fun one for this shot. Now, came in and it's pretty cool but it's kind of a little too black it's added way too much black down here um, so we could either you know, handle that by uh, playing around with our um, shadow slider see what that does see um, and you can say you know, let's just turn that effect to the shadows off um, we could come in here Play around with our highlights, and we can come in here with the uh, control.
control points and say, you know, let's just take it off of here altogether. I don't want that effect on my little foreground trees because it's so nerdy and it's so dark. Um, and I can take this control point and I can either copy it or I can actually come in and just create another one, whichever I prefer. I'm going to leave this one small. And then I believe it's all oh, give us another one. So we put that over here. And you see what we're doing is we're getting rid of the effect. And we're doing it just for the areas around here. So let's take a look at what's happening here. We've removed polarization, skylight, and tunnel. We can kind of build it all back up again. Here's Polarization. Here's skylight, and here's tall contrast. And from here, what we're going to do is see—is there anything else that we want? Um, we could play around with some of the other filters. I'm thinking for this one, we're probably pretty good. Uh, there's architecture. Let's take a look if there's anything in there we might want. Um, one of the things that I did in one of my other uh, photos is I did one of these um, bicolor filters. Um, just as you know, a fun effect. And I think I did the um, purple, black and purple here. Um, so you can kind of get the sky a different effect. And you can say, yeah, the. Um, Vertical shift is higher or lower. So let's say let's bring it down lower. And I can take it off the space needle here. Um, I can say no, I really don't like that. Oops, I just noticed a problem, a uh, mistake that I made. So that gives us an opportunity um, to go back in time in our history and say, you know what, I didn't mean to do that. So we can see what all we did while we were working here. And we can go back in time and say, the recipe, original history, Skylight filter, this is all the things we did to it. Uh, filter list changed. So, where's our bicolor? See, bicolor, we replaced it. So it's like, hey, wait, let's go back here. So now, we got that um, last um, filter back. So that's cool. We got a nice big undo list. Um, if we have any recipes that we've already created, we can use them. Um, here's some that are in the product from de by default. And we can choose to use one of those, or we can create our own. And this list may change um, between now and the time uh, the product ships. So, I'm going to say, you know, I'm pretty happy with this, but let's maybe try to see if there's one more thing we can do. Um, go to all. There's a dark and light in center. It's one that um, is kind of cool. And we'll take a look, say more on an oval shape. And we could say, you know, make the center brighter. Darker, make the border luminosity brighter or darker, and again, there's lots of things we can do. And look, again, I forgot to hit add filter. I'm still getting used to that myself. So come back here in history, and we will come here to this point. If I want to add another filter, I gotta remember click add filter. 
still so used to the old style that sometimes it's hard to remember um, to do that. Again, there's many, many different filters in here that we can use and play around with. Um, if we wanted to play around with any of the film effects, they've got a bunch of interesting types. And if you're like, yeah, hey, I kind of like this one, but I don't like all that noise. Um, you can increase or decrease the noise. And then you can say you know, how strong is the film strength. This is kind of adding a little haze. We can get rid of that. So there's lots of things we can do there. We can say, you know what? I don't really like this filter. It's not working for me. So delete it. If this is a common thing that I do a lot of times, I can come in here and save a recipe. Actually, right here, say save recipe. And say, we're going to call this uh, night sky. Whatever we want to call it. And so now, boom, we have a, um, our custom ones. This is ones I, I created in a previous video, and this is the one for this. And so the, it will show us a real-time thumbnail of how this effect would impact our photo. So I'm going to come in here and say OK. And it's done. And again, we can turn the effect on or off, or change our opacity to um, impact what effect it actually have on our image. And we can mask it out and so on.